Hello and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer Rogue Trader 40k. My name is Saigon and today Real we're central. continuing it's our 40k adventure there. with a blind playthrough um, on, of course, it the very the hardest the difficulty, uh, which is unfair. Yeah, difficulty, unfair deep. plus, to be fair. So, as we, we are, are joining today's episode, we are uh, going to talk to Xavier Kalkazar, who certainly is toying with all of that magic here. Reality bubbles before you and bursts into an agonizing shriek. A few silhouettes now stand in your way. Three of them have your face. And yet the different in striking. Each has been marked by another accomplishment and different experiences, making you feel like a protagonist of a tale about a pair of twins separated at birth. Uh, if you are a sentient creature, says one of the merciful react, uh, reflections, and you're not Idonis, I suggest you back down without a fight. I did not come here to claim your lives. Another cursed reflection says, my master charger of ways is asking this of your making. No, I can uh, feel it's not. You are playing tricks on me. You are sending me prey for great sacrifice. And the glorious reflection... Uh, says, is there some ironic lesson in what's going on? Should I be looking for a mirror? A uh, little less, or perhaps try to look at myself. Address the peaceful copy, you seem the only one who's not trying to pick a fight. Uh, yeah. Address uh, the arrogant copy. Address the cursed copy. The masters request a sacrifice, a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Toss them into the warp, their path will be unraveled and woven into yours. I wonder at which point your soul was tainted by heresy. It happened on the day that Kunurak Voidvir wounded me with a cursed blade. Okay, so those would be the three different uh, ways of how we could have ended up. Idira says, sorry, uh, but after hearing about the destruction of the crypt and the despicable things he did, I just have to shoot that bastard. Uh, Abelard is like, most definitely. I send, uh, say this is essential. An officer and a nobleman shoot that bastard. <laughs> you are disgusting. Good. How do you want to resolve uh, the situation, I'm asking? Merciful says, I'm afraid we have no choice but to fight. Cursed, uh, but I see we're outnumbered compared to you, double ganger. I think it will be uh, wise to join forces. Um, and Gloria says, I concur. We will finish off the one with the biggest retinue first and then decide who's worthy of the prize. All right. Good. Well, Glory's reflections come in at a whooping uh, 2,500 uh, hit points. And boy. I do have a lot of uh, stuff going for them. Um, so I can move to there. Gives Adira. Anything is. The option to set herself on fla uh, on fire. She, in return, but of course. puts this in here. We'll do. Anything is. And allows anyone who wants to move to here. I only want. Uh, free healing for herself, and then... What? Scouting one of these guys. Or? We're starting on the right-hand side. Can I fall back? 
now. I will not stoop to this. That and that and Destiny reshaped. Elliot. Since here in the middle, uh, gets good position. Puts a trap up there for free. Can we get one of those guys down? Uh, dodge. He has a lot of armor. And a lot of dodge as well. Scene. Start with the merciful reflection. Why exactly did we move to here? I did not click that. <clears throat> okay, whatever. You cannot force me a long talk. I will not. Do we have extra movement? If it serves your cause, just designate a target. I am so not we're trying this again. Pet, Thank you. Um, I understand your intent. <sighs> if I must. Good hit. I am not your Zeus pet. Ancestors, guide me. This tedium is beneath me. If it serves your cause, oh, no. favors the quest. That is beneath me. I am not your Xenos pet, Monkey. Okay, you continue. We need to continue getting these guys down. <sighs> if I must, no weakness is hidden from my sight. Ancestors guide me. I understand nothing. your intent. Fortune favors the swift. I am not your Xenos ancestors guide me. Continue for a hundred and fifty points of damage of pop. Hidden from my sight. Fortune favors the swift. And hardship, we prove our devotion. I am not your Xenos pet, monkey. Am I getting paid for this? That and tell me that it is done. That you got that. Problem. I've got a prize. We could position ourselves where Abelard is and shoot through them, but I think we're okay up here. Don't get too cocky. Am I getting paid for this? Never cross a cut body. Good hit. Don't get too cocky. Has a crippled body that fall. corrupt in the mind. Never cross Couple of follow-up hits. Uh, that are great. Right, fantastic. Uh, let's One step knock these guys down. Down to one hit point. What's wrong? What's wrong? Once per be battle. Uh, battle. Hmm. First round of combat, everybody in the Rogue Traders party gains 
25% chance. Well, that's a lot of good stuff that they do have, but I'm not understanding why you are not uh, willing to die. That's a bit annoying, to be honest. Okay, fantastic. I understand your intent. If it serves your cause, if I must. There is no mercy found. Let's guide me. I will triumph. Okay. So we're continuing, um, we're almost out of ammo here. If it serves your cause, no weakness is hidden from my sight. Ancestors guide me. Great hit. Anything else? Build it get a, gets a little bit more dodge. Um, can't really upgrade the damage much more. Not my worst day. Yes. Abelard is down to six. Um, On it. Will do. And my session has failed me. Uh, unfortunately, the enemy is piercing the veil as well. Oh, it's really unfortunate. Mara's eye. I will save you the next Kills one of them. Uh, in the meantime, we're using that for reload. With grace of <laughs> All right, opening up. That glory's reflection is hitting very well. Idira or Saiken, I think we're going to give. Uh, You've got a problem, I've got a prize. I think we're going to give uh, Saiken another turn. Who might want to the glorious reflection? There you go. Problem solved. Trying, monkey. <sighs> if I must, 
If it serves your cause. I will triumph. Man, too bad I never leave debts unpaid. All right. Am I getting paid for this? Oh, no. I can do that with the right incentive. I will triumph. Fantastic. Trio done. Uh, they do have a good revolver, decent power sword, and assassin's uh, clothing. They, it seems that they do have one to one. Nah, not one to one. But very similar equipment. A little bit worse than ours. Uncover my path. Life draining sword. Oh, that's not bad. And that's a level 18 staff. That's actually really good. But I doubt uh, we'll need much of that. I think we're okay with the equipment. Okay, let's go on. I can only imagine that this is, uh, this has been. Hmm, the warrior gains a number of unyielding stacks, uh, chance to ignore any incoming damage. Oh wow, that's not bad. Let's make a deal. Hmm. I think we're okay. Anyways, um, I think this is this place uh, trying its very best uh, to just keep us away from its inner sanctum. I like how you can uh, how we're starting to raid the Xenos Let's here. See. Lord Inquisitor, we are progressing according to plan. Our troops have already reached the target. Okay. No, we've well, we've seen that already. My bad. I have failed my kin. Did I mention that my whispers tell me jokes? Jokes that once said aloud make your eyes bleed and blood curdle. <laughs> Talk about oh, that comedy. The world trembles my beneath my feet. Feel cold. Is my birthright. Fantastic. That was uh, uh, the worst service. move in a very long time. Oh, careful. Gotten everybody Ready? wounded. Suck it up and fight. <sighs> Just in time. Relax. I've seen four worse injuries. I must thank you. Take this and stay out of my way. Oh, thank you, Shireen. You better hone your skills. Thank you. Well, fantastic. Luckily, we have enough of the mad kids. Embrace true. Should have potentially power. shot the generator there. 
The destruction of the web of the tech blight spreading along the walls of uh, the crypt. Yeah, uh, crypt. Yeah, this here is the very much a sign that the whole place is not welcoming us. They are invading the tomb of a necro uh, uh, of the necrons. And my guess, without knowing the story, is I would assume he potentially does that in order to gain more power. But that would be heresy, even for a inquisitor. Even for an inquisitor, that would not be okay. Good, well... Xavier Kaltasar. I see that you did not need my warning, Saiken. Your decision to come here in spite of them may have consequences, but I still have a chance to turn it into everyone's advantage, if your lordship listens to me very carefully. Abelard, with all due respect to you, Lord Inquisitor, I shall ask you to refrain from any further threats directed towards the blessed rogue trader. Let's you face repercussions from me. How cautious of you to warn me, Master Verzerian. I will remember your words. What are you doing here? Exactly what my duty dictates. Saving the Imperium. Isn't it obvious? Point of the Xeno Construct, is this what you're here for? We call it a shard, and yes. You have noted quite aptly, it is the reason I am here. The construct contains an ancient, or rather pre-ancient being of cosmic power. They called it the Satan, which, by the way, were the ones uh, that gave the Necrons uh, their immortality. The entity is currently trying to escape, and I'm here to collar it. Colors are knots at the giant device, whose design is clearly pointing of having been brought into the crypt from the outside. Marazai, grand spires of stupidity and unfathomable depth of opportunity is dangerous combination for a single monkey. Earlier, no one in the world uh, is capable of uh, teaming such power of uh, the true Ignir. The Stars devour us, and if you think uh, even a small and imprisoned part of uh, one of them is uh, going to yield to you, you are mad, monkey. Mad and short-sighted. Jay is, of course, the Inquisition uh, wants to collect it. How typical. Thrown damage, Shireen. Even I can see that, you're, uh, that no good can come from this grog shit crazy plan. What is uh, that uh, chart? A specimen of ancient predator race, devourers and pulsars of who feasted on entire star system. Reality itself bent to their power, but many millennia ago an ancient Xenos race managed to defeat them, shattered them into pieces and locked them away in prisons like this, as you can see before me. The Ignar are not uh, no more predators, uh, monkey. They are not just another sentient race. The ancient tales speak of a great war between, uh, between the Ignar and the Old Ones. And in that war, the Ignar uh, found allies whom they promised unbounding gifts. You've seen, Elanach, your species called the Necrons. The Ignar granted uh, them everything they needed to fight the enemies. But in these uh, Largen came at a price tricked into a state of uh, what was neither life nor death, the metal warriors uh, served the star devourers for aeons until they are finally rebelled and confirmed uh, their masters into poison such as, um, prisons such as this one. Do you wish to be tricked by their powers too? Kalkazar, you run sanctioned Xenos as a point rogue trader, which isn't the same as saying she is right. The Imperium will harness this creature's power and turn it against our enemies. And you th uh, think we stand a chance against it? Do you mean to say that a human is not capable of such feat? I'm not just a human. I'm an instrument of the Emperor's will. One of many. And the Imperium is omnipotent. If we were to fail, another would follow my footsteps. That is how humanity makes the impossible possible with the hands of particular people in particular circumstances. 
Your skepticism is unwarranted. How will taming this creature help to save the Imperium? Over many years of service, I have come to realize that the main problem of humanity faces is this war of the imbalance of power. Our opponents are not races or nations, but incomprehensible monsters. And yet it is high time we acquire one of our own. My yoke will bind this creature and make it a chain guard serving the very Emperor. This is not the full extent of my vision. There are other shards similar to this one scattered across the galaxy. I plan on seeking them out and confining them all inside the yoke. Each conquered monstrosity will bolster its defenses. I have further questions. How did uh, this thing up in, end up in your position? Thanks to your predecessor, I arrived in the Expanse at the call of the Emperor's fleet to deal with Archimago's Armanen's heresy. But I quickly came to the realization that the Coronas Expanse problem ran much, much deeper than tech heresy. Unprecedented piracy, running wild, blatant smuggling of Xeno artifacts, willful and impetuous rogue traders, and a growing threat of ruinous powers. All this is a region that the Drukari consider their domain. Frankly, I considered purging the entire expanse. It would have been so much easier to burn down this whole tangle of threats of corruption and the web of spies that I have woven to have presented me to a more interesting and radical solution. Whilst investigating Armanen's connections, I turned my eye to Theodora Van Valencius, who ultimately gave me the shard. How was Theodora involved in this? Theodora's instincts were uncanny. She spent Decades hunting for a key that I that could open the dimensional gates, as if she knew that there was something incredible waiting for it on the other side. Her ladyship was lucky enough to discover the shard during her expedition. A trophy that was too much for her to handle. Archmagos Armanen studied it on Theodora's behalf, creating weapons in exchange for access to a dangerous relic. But their research was too primitive and unambitious compared to the true power contained in t inside of the chart. I have one of my own acolytes, Tanakia, spent her spies to Theodora. They infiltrated the rogue traders' retinue, earned their trust, and reported to me about this magnificent object. The rest was trivial. I seized Epitaph, laid down the conditions of our few, uh, further coexistence, she was wise enough to concede defeat with dignity. I commenced an Operation Precious Sentinel. I left the garrison of Epitaph, took the key to the dimensional gate from Theodora, sealed the gate and started the creation of the Job, or Yo. I kept Theodora and her heirs in my sight, just in case. Not long before her death, I assigned Heinrichs to her and ordered her to rendezvous with him on Rikers and Minores, but your lordship inherited him instead. I admit, I wasn't aware of you. Theodora managed to keep her secret air up her sleeve. Our lord said, In the old days, Hausman Valencius would have declared war over something like this, and fought until the offender was dead. Why did you call the Astratis for your help? I needed a remarkable strong force to keep my Xenos allies in check. The Emperor's angels were just a weapon I was looking for, except considering the sensitive nature of my operation, I couldn't very well risk requesting aid from my allies in the Death Watch, could I? And then I remembered an old debt of a Space Wolf's great company, so I called in a favor. They were an asset at first. The wolves helped me close the dimensional gate by overwhelming its security system. I tasked them with hunting the Xenos condemned by Irelium Miris. But eventually they started prying. And that was unacceptable. I could control Torbald by giving him more tempting targets, but the baleful Howl Pack? They raided an outpost where my agents had been meeting with the Druk army. The pack took prisoners, but the lo uh, lost 
the esteemed brother Ulfar. I hoped they could give all to the search, but instead the wolves forced the system's coordinate out of the captives and came crushing down on my head. They had no gate to transport them, and I used nothing but warp engines. Thankfully, they realized the situation too late, and Tanakia managed to neutralize them. All right, so, uh, seeing that the inhabitants of this place almost killed you, I give there's something is wrong with your plan. Not at all. Operation uh, Precious Sentinel is a final stages. The increase in Xenos activity is a vexing yet a trivial deployment. In the grand scheme of things, they were supposed to guard the device, but they slept through their intrusion, and only the Satan's shard emanations could make them stir. Theodore's research destabilized the Shard's prison, and my project was made it worse. Whenever partic uh, the particles of the Cetan Shard energy seep out, many curious phenomena occur. The destruction of the crypt, the warp of reality. When I tame the monster, I will order it to stop disrupting the laws of the universe. And that brings me to the most interesting part of our conversation. You know my plan. So now I want to know yours. Will you admit that I am right and join me in this undeniable ambitious act, or will you try to stop me? I will be upfront with you. If it is the latter, I will be forced to remove you. But I'm sure you realize that uh, uh, already. That's the second time you have tr uh, threatened uh, the Lord Captain, says Abelard. Idira says, the future, the future you're creating. It burns, it flickers with the sufferings of millions for the sake of phantom salvation of billions, salvation in the bosom of a Xeno nightmare. Listen to yourself, what you're planning is a heresy. Enough, Saiken, I will only be heresy if I lose. If I prevail, it will be a triumphant feat in the name of saving humanity from the horrors of the universe. And I will not lose. Uh, no. You're going to uh, suck on my boot, Xavier. Farewell, then. I'm glad I've made your acquaintance, despite everything. Eliminate the rogue trader. Your existence is not Xavier, you think Show that with 3,700 hit points you stand a chance, my dude? I mean, yes, he has a couple of uh, nice abilities, but as a warrior with that stat... Dude, you're going to go down quicker than you can say what the fuck has just happened. Alright, Marazai. Earliot. Idira. Jay. We're taking this side for us. And Abelard, you're tanking. As per the usual. Alright, start the battle. And let's go, boys. Let's go. Uh, Saiken uh, gives uh, Idira the chance uh, to set herself aflame. A blaze. Marazai. Um. Anything else? On it. Will do. So, um, anything is? I'm thinking, is there anything else? Yes. Everybody here takes uh, extra burning damage. We heal ourselves and we Gucci. Good. I will. Elliot uh, starts. Whispers, guide my hand. Oh wow, these guys are quite tough. A veteran. Well, two thousand seven hundred hit points. We won't get them down in one go. This stick. I think we're just going to remove a couple of uh, the 
less problematic uh, enemies. So that gives us extra um, that gives us extra uh, action points and we're starting. Your Xenos, another soul slips beyond the veil. If it serves your cause. I am not your Xenos. Good, that's the small ones gone, except that uh, this guy here isn't gone yet. I understand your intent. One, two, and. If I must. Ancestors guide me. We're going to hit that veteran. No weakness is hidden from my sight. You cannot force me, Elantak. This tedium is beneath me. Fortune favors the swift. Um I am not your Xenos pet, monkey. Very good. First order, everything worked out well. We're almost... We're almost there. Um, Tell me, and it is done. There you go, now we can give another finest hour. That's what I was hoping for. Don't get too cocky. There are legends about me. Good, Erliot gets another finest hour. This time with a little bit more damage. I understand your intent. I am not your Xenos ancestors. I will not. This tedium is beneath me. Fortune favors the swift. No weakness is hidden from my sight. Good, we need to reload that unfortunately costs a lot of Action points. Favors the swift. If it serves your cause. Watch my back. Going somewhere. Okay, that was an excellent hit. Am I getting paid for this? All right. Does this guy have a lot of armor? No. Through chaos, I stride. Guides me. I will triumph. Doesn't show any damage. That's strange. Let's just double check this here. I mean, that's good damage. Sow the seeds of discord. This here does not show any damage. The carnage I find purpose. Oh, 
All right, and it does not show damage because they seem to be immune to that particular spell. Good, healing ourselves. Um, I think we're shifting this here over. And we're good. Let's make it quick. Good. We're going to single kill this guy. Kalkazar. All right. Um. This guy here, the Inquisit, uh, uh, is the only one who is un, uh, who can be affected by our Emperor's Wrath. Uh, just out of curiosity, this here would still hit, but not very hard. Okay, cool. Um, Ruin beckons. Purpose guides me. Elliot gets another turn. She hits very well. Continues to uh, give more. If it serves your cause. No weakness is to it from continues my to give side. more debuff to Kalkazar and continues to aim for him. Okay. Very good. If it serves your cause, Mystic uh, takes shots and we're continuing with even more shots. No weakness is hidden from my sight. <sighs> yeah, they got their buff off and uh, the zone very much helps them to survive, but that won't be a permanent thing. Come on. What are we waiting for? Thank you.
All right, moves to here, opens them up, leads himself. That is okay. Heals himself as well. I knew exactly why we would heal up because every single time this is happening. I understand your intent. With grace and manners. Oblivion approaches. Hold on. My resolve is un out of my way. I approach the designated position. If it serves your cause. Good. Savior continues to be debuffed. Giving him an opening. But still, it's difficult to hit him. If it serves your cause. I am not your Zeno's pet, Monkey. This battlefield air is good for my lungs. I'd like to, but I can't. You've got a problem. I've got a price. Okay. Uh, hmm. Good question. Shouting him down to his knees. Uh, that was satisfying. Okay, moving to here. Don't get to Never cross a Fantastic hit, lovely. For the first time, we can actually use all of our AOE buffs uh, that uh, that I wanted to use so often. I've seen worse battles than this in my time. It will be done. At your back and call. Indeed. Anything else? Very good. Okay. Uh, let's not do too much magic. Don't want to summon anything. Was, was, was that you? Or I know what is to come. But of course. Activated, or all is lost. No more. An invisible yet clearly tangible aura of power envelops in a figure clad in the robes of a tech priest. This is it, the place of our origin. It was your strike and your wish to escape your prison that begot us. 
a mysterious creature that has been on your ship's soul for so long turns your face to you. But it is you, Saiken, who truly ushered us into this world. So let us meet our abdominal uh, precursor together for the sake uh, of it is being ready to free. Greetings, Nomnus. We are out of time. So much for binding him, eh? So much for... Don't worry, we're just going to bind him. The Emperor offers no quarter <laughs> to his enemies. Neither... Okay, so we're fighting against the Satarn chart, 25,000 hit points, deflection 50. Let's maybe look what the guy is uh, doing. Ultra high stats, plummeting stars uh, with high rate of fire, uh, lots of uh, damage, time is arrow, disperse, Satarn chart teleports uh, the enemy to a random position across the battlefield, um, flow inversion, cone shaped area. Satan Shard uh, creates various copies of itself. Dimensional swap. Satan Shard swaps position with copies. Cannot be attacked, disturbed, yada yada yada. Switches uh, negative effects become staggered instead of suffering. Stun cannot, uh, cannot be stunned. As long as any shard uh, remains, each time it is attacked, the Zetarn shard will grant a stack of reconceptualization to trigger a reflective retribution on the attacker. Well, that looks like an absolute monstrosity of a batter. Abelard wishes to go forward. Uh, wishes, so strong of a word, must go forward. Starting the battle. I need no Idira does this Anything and a little is. bit of that, and definitely Honest. a bit of this and what? some of that. Was that you or some more of that? But of course, some of that, and she heals herself. Won. Okay, Saiken. So Starting with Earliot. Triumphs. Destiny reshaped. If I must. This guy has so much armor. If it serves Let's reduce it. Oh, it's a more serviceable level. I Definitely uh, is going to be the main uh, enemy here. I am not your Xenos pet, monkey. That was a miss. No weakness is hidden Good from hit. my sight. For a start. <sighs> if I'm fortune favors the swift. 118. We're getting there. If it serves your cause, no weakness is hidden from my sight. Keep it going. Ancestors guide me. No weakness is hidden from my sight. I am not your Xenos pet, monkey. This tedium is beneath me. Fortune favors the swift. Good. And we're scouting it or following it so that others can hit it more easy. 
Tell me, and it is done. Don't get too cocky. Okay, we even got a decent chance of hitting it. Well, we dealt a total of a thousand points of damage. Ruin beckons. Purpose guides me. One step closer. Well, that's more like it. I will triumph. <laughs> Guides me. Should have uh, done that beforehand. All right, two good hits, uh, two good crits. Uh, that is uh, one, not so good. Um, Anything else? Armor is at zero, which is great. That is not my destiny. On it. No way. Well, it couldn't be that easy, could it? Alright, Adira moves a little bit out. I understand your intent. Finally, more damage. Yeah, we're just going this to continue beneath me. to scout these uh, these things out and oh, fortunately the dismantling attack didn't really yeah well it reduced uh, the weapon and ballistic skill but that's about it Good, we need to deal with the copy. Okay, only Saiken is here. Idira, where is everyone? Scrambled. As the thing promised uh, would happen. Okay, just trying to find a position where we can hit all of them. I won't waste my time on that. I think this here is okay. Upon the weak. Guides me. One shard is down. Another charge is down. Time. 
Yeah, really, it will take a uh, take a hit. I don't like that. I am not your zinger. Wonderful. One step closer. Should have just not taken any action with her. Wonderful. I will triumph. Good. Um, we're doing a bit of that. <coughs> Definitely going to here. Double miss. Not good. We're dealing almost no damage. Not good. That, that. You've got a problem, I've got a prize. Uh, do a little bit of this. <clears throat> Living on the edge. Am I getting paid for this? Second so takes a turn. Six thousand uh, points of damage. Nice. Hmm. What are we going to do? Give everybody more damage. I hold all the cards. Marazai moves up. Goes here. Uh, we need the opening. Very good hit. And we're finally getting a couple of hits in. That's around 2000 points of damage. Jay moves up. Another 600, that's good. Now, Abelard. I will do my duty. Heals his friend. It will be done. 
And then begins to strike uh, the chart as well. Okay, that could work. What is this foreboding? Move to here. Thank you. Anything else? Shift that over there. Was was that you? Another five hundred points of damage, I like that. Can't ignite him, unfortunately. But of course. Okay. Ravage and conquer. Still round number one, which means Saiken has a perfect situation. He can attack as often as he wants. Eight thousand and seven hundred. Oh, eight eight. Chart is strong. Not sure if we can even taunt him. A tactically sound approach. Let me help. Jay gets some healing. This wound will make a fine scar. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Victory is imminent. Can I call back now? In the Imperium. Be gone. Not sure how the demon even started appearing. This and we'll do. that, and we'll get a little bit more of this. Anything else? Buff ourselves. Armor reduced to zero and dodge reduced quite a bit as well. Thousands. Uh, that's not good enough. That was the wrong button. I wanted to give over a turn. He dodged it. Oh, it's so unfortunate. It will be done. Another dodge. Indeed. Someone else can do this. I know what is to come. Copy gone.
No can do. Not this Dryer's job. But a court. Idira moves you? over. Or... Places this. That is not my destiny. And that. We'll do. And that. And I can't so hit sure. this guy. Mm, unfortunate. Um. That was a cool end fight. The ancient monster struggles against the energy manacles of the yoke. It is impossible to have power that make reality itself burst and seems are now being forced into the compact, the dungeon, quark, and qu uh, quark by quark. Returning to its cruel and painful non-existent in the moment, it could struggle harder, but something is hindering it. You are the cause of the hindrance. Only now does the Cetan Char turn its focus on you. For the battle was nothing more than a reflexive resistance to an alien mind absorbed by a completely different range of thoughts and responses. But now it's thinking about you and its thoughts are uh, so corporeal that you can sense them and know them. It seeks an end uh, to the confrontation it is capable of resolving it in a way that would benefit all more and more tears appear on the shards form as the yoke absorbs its power and uh, becoming increasingly hardy for the shard to maintain its physical structure each perfection uh, you inflict brings the star predator closer to imprisonment do not bow your head before our abdominable predecessor it was begotten by the dark abyss in the pa uh, abysses in the past. It is a fragment of which uh, most devoured stars and erased civilization. It knows no benefit other than its own. Allow us to stand against it. It is our time, our impossible chance. Yet another layer of reality cracks. Figure appears uh, to you after you've given your probing and appraising look. Uh, Theodora permits herself a slight smile. All right, I contain you to oblivion without end. Your strike leaves another fracture on its eternal body, forcing the Sitan to expand one more grain of its att attention and maintaining its physical form. And that is all it takes for its power to start flowing into the oak in an endless stream. The ancient monstrosity lets out an enraged howl for the second time. Uh, it is an eternity. Uh, its freedom is being used uh, is being usurped uh, in so forceful a fashion. As you stand before the yoke's controlling altar, you gaze upon it, possibly the greatest instrument of destruction in the history of your race, the key that unlocks the gate to a nigh unfettered height of power, a weapon, a cogator blocks uh, that was designed to transmit orders to the imprisoned Sitan and shatters it into pieces, a weapon no longer merely a prison. Shitan, uh, the Shitan shard was destroyed. The shadow of calamity threatening the Coronas expanse should the ancient god ever be unshackled has been lifted, at least for a time. 
gathering its bleeding worlds uh, together again, the rogue trader restored order to the expand without compromise, protecting the faith and leaving behind any notion that the region could ever be beyond his righteous justice. An expansion began that would slowly turn the sector into a new province of the Imperium where the rogue trader were no longer needed. The Van Valencius dynasty was given the privilege of becoming the stewards of the Expans. The rogue trader led many campaigns to conquest against the Xenos uh, enclaves and heretic nests. Caradval, an infamous disciple of the Runius power, gathered forces in corrupted systems to challenge the defender of the creed. A great confrontation was unavailable. Strict abidance by the law and devoted to the imperial creed brought great renown to the rogue trader. Every planetary turn on every world uh, in the sector, thousands of prayers were offered to the Golden Throne, praising the name of the Guardian of the Coronas Expanse. Legends has it that the God Emperor himself favored his steward, granting him miraculous powers to crush evil and shielding him from enemy plots. The truth is that the Ecclesity, uh, um, in its battle to control the narratives of the Imperium, persecuted those who spread such tall tales, as well as those who demanded the rogue trader to be proclaimed a living saint. Incendia Corda continued her merciless fight against the heresies plaguing the Expanse. Not concerning herself with notions of justice, she brought the Imperium's justice everywhere she went, killing heretics by the thousand stained glass windows with her uh, likeness illuminated by bonfires graced the sector's chapters. With her tightening grip of fear, the prayers of Pius became even more fervent in their revenance to the gracious Chenister. The era of Caligula's cruelty and wrath came to an end. Only then did the many terrified witnesses to his vile crime step forward and recount them. Memories of the good, prosperous years for the pre protectorate under the wise ruler of Caligula's winter scale were eclipsed by the legacy of his innumerable and bloody crimes. Yvain Winterscale underwent his Magni ascension and became his dynasty's new rogue trader. Many said that the noble Yvain lacked firmness of judgment, yet he had more than enough trust even in those who were unworthy of it. The young rogue trader did not forget those who had saved uh, him from the uh, record system. Of favors uh, that House Run Valencius has bestowed on the Winter Scales. Thanks to the patronage of the Valencius dynasty, the cult of Saint Drusius was successfully in spreading the influence across uh, the expanse. Overshadowed, uh, the cults of other saints lost followers in face of the harsh choice, slip into obscurity, or swear allegiance to the ideals of Drusus the warrior. Hieronymus Doloroso remained the most revenant priest in the cult of the Saint de Drusos. He turned no one away hearing confessions from pirates, village rats, des deserters, beggars alike. It may have been one of those undeserving uh, wretches who infected uh, him with a rare form of leprosy that robbed him of sight, yet his heart could always see the corruption in the souls of the repenting children. The deal struck uh, with the uh, Cognizant fleet and the Von Valencis dynasty replenished the explorators' dwindling supplies and allowed them to re-embark on a rapid and unrelenting expansion campaign. With powerful bases established in the expanse, the Omnisire scout bravely ventured forth uh, towards unarmed stars uh, with the same drive that propelled the Ain sisters to explore the expanse itself. The schism of discontinuing the cycle uh, engulfed the entire Cognizant fleet and some of uh, civil war was over. Disregarding uh, the commandments of their forefathers, the explorators started down a dangerous path of new comprehension creation, uh, revision and procedures of the algorithm. The fleet was uh, united once uh, more and in its unity it was ready to stare down the horrors standing in the way of the catechism uh, catechism of maintenance and operation. Magnus Domnius Opticus 22, one of the first to hail the return of the Messiah, took the helm of the mother squadron of the Cognizant fleet, unquestioningly embracing the teaching of discontinuing the cycle he personally saw the crushing uh, of any renegades who did not accept the Messiah's words as truth, earning himself the identifier of Chrome Scorch. 
profitable deals between Fellowship of the Void and the Valencius dynasty helped them to subdue smaller brigand squadrons in the Sectrum. Many worlds and stations saw the opening of the Fellowship Dens, which grotesquely sincere pirate representative took kickbacks from traders in exchange for safe passage. Naturally, the servants of the Valencius dynasty and people under the rogue traders' uh, protection were safe from the Fellowship of the Void's attack, mostly. Naturally, the servants of the Valencia's dynasty and... Okay. After Rizzer's death, her place was taken by a quiet man who simply called himself Helpful Acquaintance uh, and was prone to coining his own nonsensical words. Few guessed that a, scrawn, a scrawny fellow had been Rizzer's first mate uh, who possessed an iron will and truly monstrous nature. On his quiet orders, the pirate uh, conducted brazen and violent raids. Violence, though the expanse put many on guard, as a result, uh, Kisbelica mission's business declined. Soon rumors surfaced amongst the traders about the so-called commission that has made uh, through the moor and into the expanse. It is, uh, professed, um, it is, its professed purpose was um, to audit assets and take measurements to restructure operations. These words carried uh, with an ominous threat. When Octavia became the new leader of the Casbalica mission, she made every effort to not end up like Vladian. Uh, the mission's leadership demanded profits of Cordias and forces twisted for blood. Octavia's dilemma sorted itself out. One day, when Footfall's coal traders were arrested and herded into the Adeptus R. Maskers, the ship was unlocked from the, uh, the station and, uh, and left to drift towards Fubidules uh, with no fuel and almost no air. Octavia was not on board. She had made a deal to turn over all of her accomplices and she disappeared with a fortune in thrones. A multitude uh, of agreements bound the Imperial Navy to the Van Valencia's uh, dynasty. Captains were eager to patrol the protectorate knowing they would be richly rewarded. Competing ships were lost to pirate attacks and subjected to harsh inspections. Many of the officers quietly entered the dynasty's service, receiving a salary and title in exchange to their excellent skills, where the admirals valued their new friends and enjoyed the gold in the uniforms. Chapters Captain Austerius Thornfast uh, founded Thornfast uh, Companions Mercenary Company selling and trade and acquiring a, a substantial escort fleet. After three decades of traveling the Mond, returning to the Imperium in the hopes of obtaining the new fable warrant trade, it is not known how this venture ended. Dragonus continued to grow for two decades until uh, a terrifying rebellion put a decisive, a decisive end to its prosperity. A genetic uh, anathema known as the gene stealer cult infiltrated the hives of uh, Dragonos and tried to take over the world. Millions were exterminated in purges in street battles, destroying many hives, setting Dragonos back centuries and depriving it of its chance of becoming the capital of the expanse. Kiavagama washed off the stain of its former defilement and became known as a pious and productive world. Hard work, inquisi uh, inquisitive study and mysterious technology glorified the Deus, Mecha Deus Mechanicus. Uh, the enthralled, uh, enthroned Nal Caliph drew millions of pilgrims to grant the planet a hallowed status. Its sacred calculations continued for centuries and the foremost sages of the Adeptus Mechanicus traveled to the world so that they could attempt to divine its meaning. Janus was conquered, uh, the Xeno spirits were ex uh, exorcised, and the wilderness was subdued. The fields grew until they covered the entire planet, and billions of tons of provisions were harvested there. Janus has become the breadbasket of the expanse, and to threaten it would condemn millions to starvation. Janus became a melting pot for cultures of hundreds of worlds, taking refugees from across the entire expanse. In its darkest hour, it became a stronghold and symbol of the hope. After the crisis passed, refugees started to return to their home planets to reclaim the lost worlds and thus earning Janus the proud name, the home of the Reconquista. The mines of Virbus uh, VI grew deeper and deeper and soon the planet became the darkest and most frightening quality of the expanse, the final stop for the exiled in the world of the damned, the brutal hardening uh, inhabitants of the death world feared neither humans nor Xeno horrors, knew no mercy and were known for the most fearsome fighters in the sector. Those who have treated, uh, who had traded their lives for the right to leave the eternal darkness in the mines. 
guarded luxurious palaces were built on the climate uh, domes surrounding the clouds of the poison the houses of so many powerful black guards uh, persecuted aristocrats and wealthy scoundrels that Viebus VI gained unimaginable uh, political influence. Such grand and sinister deeds were done there that before long the grim death world was spoken of the new political center of the expanse. No longer secluded and forlorn, Foulstone turned into the spiritual center of the expanse, clad in its gold and power. <coughs> Rulers were there by anointed greatness, criminals for penance, and righteous for encouragement, and there was no end to them inside. Converted into the Comet Shrine, Faustone's moon spread the world's uh, Saint Cogiatus through the expanse, protecting worlds from attacks and enemies of humanity. Its servant asked for neither money nor power, but only for the relics left in their blessed uh, patron. The wise handed uh, them over with revenants while the haughty learned how heavy the hammer of the four stone wars the great judgment of incendia corda uh, the atrocities committed by her confessional units bled footfall dry the station soon faced uh, a labor shortage and few survivors of the religious purge could handle the increased workloads without uh, thrones from the cold uh, trade uh, the station fell into decay footfall entered an airy, uh, era of pity uh, piety hunger and hardship left without the sun the riker system ceased to exist it's now frigid place spun away from the darkness no longer held by the gravitational pull of the star the centuries later a fragment of the riker menores entered the fugrietus system and was snared uh, by void miners a piece of its rock was delivered to footfall with the revenants used to restore the gaunt emperor statue as a final memorial for the world devoured in corruption with the fall of the unholy patron of uh, the edge of daybreak uh, the cult of the final dawn perished as well every cell of the cult was hunted down and eliminated rumors that some worshippers of the ruinous powers have managed to get away hiding in the writings of the war banished lord under their robes were baseless Left without a mission leader, the world bearers retreated to the depths of the Immaterium. The last act of vengeance was a bloody assault on footfall. The populace of several asteroids was um, exterminated and enslaved, and the statue of the god Emperor was badly damaged. Rumors of rotting remains of Aldari crafts world spread around the expanse. Explorers, privateers, Casbellian agents, and anyone hungry for easy money all rushed to the frontier systems to V for price of the pri a piece of the price. Some were swallowed uh, by the warp, whilst others perished in the skirmishes with the rivals. The most skilled and fortunate returned empty-handed after decades of searching. The colossal ship, as big as the imperial world, simply vanished as if it has never existed. But legends of the forbidden treasure lift and continues to bring daring souls to ruin. When news of the death of the Master of the Flesh reached him, uh, Sharakrai sent uh, what was left of the Alderi ships to the most distant stars of the Expanse. There, hidden from the human eyes of Sinotech and sorcery, the Alderi carried uh, their humble existence and even managed to establish a few contacts amongst the trusted monkey who helped them uh, to help the Xenos in return for knowledge and technology. Alderi from the fallen craft world, Kluderak once uh, traveled through the darkness of the expanse and uh, into a desperate attempt to gather the remains of their kind were becoming a ra rarer sight. Even the most skillful Kesbalika agents and uh, audacious bounty hunters with knowledge of Xeno settlements on the edges of the expanse could no longer find the trail. Squads of Alderi rangers suddenly appeared on different walls and disappeared abruptly without shedding a, a drop of blood. Their purpose remained an enigma. The spirit monolith purified by Harlequin trope on the Crone world was hidden from the insettable eyes of Monkey by the raging warp storms. Ships uh, started uh, going missing more frequently in the star systems close to the planet. Even the most courageous captains gave their regions a wide berth and it was named the Damned Reefs. Somewhere on the underside of reality lay Komarak, woven from manifold other dimensions and uh, illuminated as always with the light of the stolen suns. Its streets ever filled with uh, screams and agony, any misfortune experienced by the dark city became another scar on the appearing face, lost 
among thousands of other vile uh, blemishes. As long as pain pulsed in its blood-soaked spires, the insatiable and unshakable Komra continued its flight through the webway, along with unchanging ruler, the leader of the Cabal of the Black Heart, the most dangerous of all Drukhari, Ajdrubal Vakt. After the rogue trader visit, dimension rifts opened around the spire of the Reaving Tempest, flooding the streets of the Komra with demons. This incursion terrified the Komarak, the Cabal of the Black Heart managed to stop it, but some Archons saw the event as a sign of their leader's weakness, other interpreted as a grim omen of the entirety of the Dark Way. The fall of the Cabal of Reaving Tempest united the Komarak um, for a brief of bloody moment. The elites of the Dark City set their squabbles aside and found a new game of tearing apart the dormant Archon Umeras. Uh, the fate of the Reaving Tempest reminded the other Cabals that nothing lasts forever in the Dark City save the city for itself. The dimensional gate leading to the Necron Tomb Worlds was sealed uh, and not a soul knew what transpired on the other side. But now and then rumors came from the fi uh, fringers of settlements set, uh, settled by humanity. Rumors of a sickle-shaped ship that appeared and disappeared suddenly without showing any signs of hostility yet. The Vox, uh, voice of the Vox Master Vigdus Suri Okta of the Toliman dynasty was long heard on the Koranus expanse, uh, trumpeting the arrival of the rogue traitor. It brought gladly tidings to the faithful and instilled horrors in heretics awaiting righteous retribution. After her death, uh, Vigdus was granted the honor of being immortalized as into a herald server skull. For the many centuries to come, her voice praised uh, the Valencia's dynasty, transmitting orders across decks. Uh, Master Helmsman Ravor diligently executed his duties until the dying day, without uh, one succumbing to the uh, uh, sleep's sweet embrace. Only when the place shall penetrate the bridge's armor hall uh, was stopped by the stern officer's unyielding chest, uh, did he finally no rest, leaning against his trusted helm. Sacrificing his health in a diligent service of the rogue trader and letting his waistline expand even more, High Factotum Generous Dunrock watched over the dynasty's riches for years. In the day his body was found uh, sprawled over the paperwork in his office, his assistant came forward with two reports. The most esteemed Janus Dunrock has passed away of natural causes due to complications of a weakened heart. And regarding your every, uh, asset, everything is in order. Blatham Tokara ended his days uh, as a maintenance servitor on the janitorial team, losing his life due to an error by the Technomart who uh, sent him to clean compartment schedules for decompression. Technomart received a penance of seven electro whippings and a fine equal to his annual pay as a punishment for, handling, uh, for mishandling property. Urban Divestein um, cared more about preserving the influence of his line than the well-being of the Protectorate. His blinded division lost uh, him the governor's seat and the respect of his family. Within a few generations, one of the largest houses of Draconis had turned an obscure family of petty aristocrats. Machinus Sauerbeck was loyal to the rogue trader uh, to the last, despite all of the rumors of uh, contrary. Finding little affection among his uh, subjects and family, he strayed true to his uh, himself remaining a forthright, severe and uh, pious person. Machinus strived to ensure that every soul uh, in his uh, charge felt justifiable dread before both him and the god emperor over years. The Elder Sauerbeck grew even closer to the rogue trader, at least as far as the cold, ill-disposed person could, and he proved himself a dutiful and uh, merciless warrior. Uh, he became the Warden of the Dragonos and vigilantly guarded the Lord Captain's life and peace. Members of the House Wernstein served the dynasty faithfully and loyally, amassing more and more power. A century later, they had finally gained the respect um, enjoyed by other noble houses, yet power and luxury can dull any blade. Uh, the now pampered and idle aristocrats were scarcely recognizable as their descendants of formidable Seneschal Verenstein. For reasons unknown, the members of uh, Ver uh, Ver a Versarian family found themselves time and time again as targets of assassinations. 
victims of unpredictable riots and the focus of the palace intrigue. The misfortune that plagued their house suddenly stopped when Regina Sauerbett met her end. Clemencia uh, Versarian, daughter of Abelard and Chancellor of Draconos, executed her duties irreproachably and even found time to school her younger generations of the family. She was equally skilled mentor, chancellor, political operative after centuries of immaculate service. She surprised everyone by leaving her position and becoming the first mate on a trade ship. She would later admit, like a true Verisian, uh, that she had always had a passion for ships and void uh, reaving. The Harlequin, known as Nocturne of Oblivion, visited the Expanse once again, sneaking into uh, Dargonios. He came to the Rogue Trader's palace and left him a special gift, a case of an Aldari crafting unmistakably ancient and precious, adorned with the rune of an eye inside of a triangle. The Lord Captain uh, knew what it contained. The Harlequin uh, candidly warned him. Uh, that he was drawing the Van Valencia's dynasty into a deadly dance, a shaking doom that all will freeze uh, with the threats of terror's loom. Then he promptly departed uh, without reason. A few hours later, assassins from the dark uh, city appeared following uh, his trail and were mercilessly killed. The armor bore the signs of the Cabal of the Black Heart. After months of searching, Dragonos' uh, wonders uh, found the remains of Archelius Scandalus on the lower level of the hive. Drukhari artifacts and records discovered beside uh, him indicated that uh, the agents of the Inquisition had been compromised and uh, was working for the Xenos. Marazai confirmed the guilt of the deceased Inquisitor's agents, described in detail with torture he inflicted upon the poor soul, gained the obedience and loyalty. He also confirmed that Iliad had found and killed his monkey toy, yet few of uh, uh, choose to believe that the words of the cursed Xenos and thus um, the secret of the death of Archelius Scandala was never publicly known. The savage deeds of the Gorday scuffed Toff, witnessed on football, traumatized him forever. His architectural genius was scattered. Only a rare collection of true connoisseurs held his work, written in a shaky hand, football, the ultimate void station. The expanse, full of uh, strange stories, yet one of them most bizarre tales emerged from the wake of the rogue trader Van Valencia's rise to prominence. According to the legends of every world's rogue trader visited, people and objects would suddenly vanish without a trace and they found themselves in the same room as a mirror, even an utterly ordinary one. Abelard uh, Vazarian remained the Lord Captain Seneschal and right hand until his dying breath. House Vesarian, cleared of any accusations of mutiny, dedicated itself uh, to the Dragonos fleet. When years later Abelard left the world, the worthiest successor of his family received the honor of inheriting the high office of Seneschal. Having completed the last journey with his lord captain Abelard Vesarian, with the gracious permission of the rogue trader, has left his post as Seneschal and took over the helm uh, of his large family. Sister Argenta, by no secret of the great respect gratitude she felt towards the Lord Captain, yet duty compelled her to leave the Valencia's uh, retinue. With the blessing of the Ecclesari, she found a minor order of the Adeptus Sorotai, the order of the one star united around the keeper of the sacred relic. The sisters protected the faithful from the danger still lurking expanse. The wider order and the courageous founder quickly became heroes of legends, instilled hope and inspiration in the heart of Terra's faithful children. Enjoying the privilege of uh, the Mecatum Tabula Officiale, Jay Haradi found herself um, her way into the heart of the Expanse underworld. She became known as the Baroness of Shadows, having amassed so much wealth and influence she became uh, the control of an economic fate of the sector. Even the most powerful figures of the Expanse were forced to reckon with her, reckon with, uh, with and despise her. For a long time, Jay was able to throw out the attempts on her life until one day she disappeared. Many continue to believe that she still rules the Expanse from the shadows even deeper than before. Heinrichs von Kallox, the former interrogator of Ordo Zenos, took the mantle of uh, the Lord Inquisitor after his mentor's death. Receiving both Inquisitor's Rosette and the duty of defending the sector from the enemies of humanity, Van Kellogg's became the new warden of the Corona Sixpence. After laying his hands off the instruments of mass destruction, 
the Inquisitor announced a crusade against many heresies of the Expanse. With no regard for the lives lost and no mercy for the smallest offense, he purged the region with fire and sword, uniting thousands of fanatics under his banner. When the Inquisitor Van Kellogg's time came to an end, he left behind a massive retinue of acolytes. One of them assumed his mentor's mantle, and um, when the Inquisition fell, fighting unknown Xenos into the galactic south of the Expanse. The Lord Inquisitor found a most loyal ally in Incentia Cordia. She gladly became a level instrument of the Van Kalok's hand. In her journey with the rogue trader Cassia Orselio, experienced all of the hardships and delights of the galaxy, the invaluable experience and new knowledge helped her to finally conquer her fears and accept herself and her powers. Lady Navigator became novators uh, of the house, um, tasked uh, with addressing the consequences of Trisphone's rule and the chaos that followed her disappearance. For the duty of her reign, she patiently worked on uniting the feuding branches of the house, forging alliances and expanding the influence of ha uh, House Orselio. The Starway Atlas, which contains the memories of Trisphone and the Seth Lassia clan, lost its power. Also, Celio's navigator once again had to rely on their skill alone in the depths of the Immaterium. Many lost their lives, but those who survived the crisis became hardened veterans and pillars of the house. Most of these fortunate souls were young and brave, too few amongst them were old and wise. Despite the scandalous rumors about a love affair with a rogue trader, Lady Navigator Cassia continued to accompany her lover amongst the stars of the Expanse for a time. Their love was like a candle flame, warm, tremulous, insatiable, and quickly extinguished. When Cassia took the throne as Novator, love gave way for duty. Some praised their doomed love over the glasses of an armsack, whilst others cursed and spat in disgust. Yet, even after entering an arrangement uh, marriage uh, passing on her precious genes, uh, Cassia kept in contact with the only person she had ever fully loved until her dying day. Adiria Tzlas uh, lived several more years after the rogue trader's uh, grand campaign on Epiter. Despite her short life, she left behind many legends and tales of her adventures of the Lord Captain Service and of terrible war phenomena she has manifested. Shortly before her death, Adira vanished from her post Jay disappeared with her. When Jay returned <clears throat> many circles later, she declared that Idira's last day had been full of joy and adventure, and her greatest pleasure had been watching the Void Whales play. In announcing the discontinuing of the circle, the Armament Collective instilled terror on the hearts of those who revert the theorism of purity, but it gave hope to others. After gathering its disciples and recruiting servo soldiers from the vessel planets, it ventured into worlds of screaming vortex and to the inferior forges of the dark mechanicus. The march uh, reindoctrinated uh, was meant to seize the stolen secrets of the Omnissiah from the hands of the heretics, temper the cult of the fire of battle, and transform it into a tool for both eradication and comprehension. The fleet disappeared in the darkness, and only rare echoes of its astropathic message were ever intercepted. For many long years, Elliot traveled with the rogue trader's side, helping him to decipher the secret of a lost Xenos races and lending him wisdom of her kind. Half a century later, she sensed that it was time to say goodbye, the path of the outcast has come to an end. After bidding farewell to her Elenach, Elliot made her way to her surviving kin. Elliot found a new path, the path of a warrior she only hoped she would never be forced to raise her weapon again uh, to the morals who have become her true brothers and sisters in arms. Rumor says it Elliot and Pascal met among, uh, again amongst the stars. A band of Aldari warriors were trying to protect an ancient planetary edifice uh, of people uh, from the conventious servants of the Omnissiah. Upon learning that Elliot was leading the Xenos, Pascal personally descended to the planet and struck down his former comrade in arms. Her death did not stir any feelings in his metallic chest. Marazai Azresh, also known as the Tempest Doom, spent several years with the rogue trader, filling its entire crew with terror. 
However, with the time, his restlessness and ambitious nature got the better of him, having grown wary of the companion of a monkey that drew Kari left the ship. Soon after the Koranos expanse saw the rise of a new a mercenary group, a motley army of humans and Xenos led by a bloodthirsty and ruthless Drukari leader. Years later, Marasai's name uh, resounded through the expanse once more. His gang had intercepted Ashtarian Varstein's ship. Her head was delivered to the Abelard with a note informing that it was a gift from an old acquaintance in remembrance of the glorious past. Abelard's grief uh, sent him on a six years long hunt for the despicable Xenos, which sadly was unsuccessful. After joining the Stormbiters, Ulfor Thunderlung soon became the pack leader, taking the place of Thorbald, who met an honorable end. The new leader sent a message to Fenris, stating his intention to remain in the Expanse. There were too many enemies lurking in these hunting grounds that deserved uh, the Allfather's wrath. Legions paved the formidable pack's path in gold. Years later, Ulfa found a battle in which he could meet his honorable death, but Warp was suddenly torn asunder, uh, and a ship of uh, Fenris, bearing the mark of a wolf head, came to his aid, saved from the battlefield by his loyal companion, Albert. Ulfar accepted the honor of the Dreadnought and was entombed in sacred armor. During the blessed ritual, he cursed and demanded to be left to his death, but his brothers merely answered with a mirthful laughter. When he recovered his senses, Ulfar led his force to the heathen stars. The Allfather has given him a new mission in the near death vision. No one of the Expanse has heard a word from the Space Wolves since their departure, yet many believe one day they will return victorious. It is rumored that the true cause of Torvald's Ironhide's demise was treachery. Faced with a superior enemy in the Space Wolves, called on an allied uh, ship for help, but a nearby squadron of the Cognizant fleet withdrew, defiantly broadcasting the blood debt to Archmage's armament is not forgotten. Such was the echoes of the deeds of the rogue trader of the House of Valencias, deeds that transformed the Coronas expanse and prepared it for uh, events even darker and more violent. Uh, but those are events for a different story. This uh, one has come to an end. Oh wow, that was a very, very, very long ending. Thank you so much for watching. Owlcat Games has done a terrific job in bringing the 40k universe to life. It was a long playthrough, um, potentially one of the longer ones, but such is life of a CRPG, right? You want to go through it and there is a lot of content to explore. My review of the game will follow uh, sh uh, soon, shortly, but uh, my first impressions are throughout positive. There are, of course, a couple of improvement potentials, but I had a great time, a blast, uh, with uh, the dogmatic playthrough of a Psyker. I hope you had an equally interesting journey, and uh, I hope you enjoyed your time over 85 episodes. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you um, like the playthrough, then let me know what was your favorite moment, which was your favorite character, and would you like to see more um, of our kids' games? Uh, those were the questions. With that, I'll leave you into a good evening, good afternoon, or whatever time it is for you, and see you in the next playthrough. Bye-bye.